Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the workbench. Dan here as always, and in this video we're going to be tackling another covered hopper. This one is a customer request. Uh, this one I'm doing for a customer, and he asked if I could show some of the weathering techniques on this, so here we go. Uh, this is CSXT 2565-37, Richmond, Fredericks, and Potomac covered hopper. Uh, these are fairly common. Uh, they're getting pretty rare now. A lot of them have gotten sold off. Uh, and a lot of them have gotten repainted or have deteriorated so bad uh, that they don't look like this anymore. But there are still a very select few that still look like this as presented on the Atlas Trainman model. This is all stock patching done by them. You can see that you still got some of the lettering in between the patches, which is pretty cool. And then you still got the original uh, plaque with the Richard and Frederick's with the Tomac lettering. Uh, the only thing that's been done to this car where the wheels were changed and new couplers were added. So I'm pretty much ready to go and get right into the weathering here. Uh, so I'll go ahead and talk to you guys about the prototype now and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing to this. This is what I'm going to be trying to aim for on the prototype. You can see that these got very well rusted in. They got very weathered, very, very deteriorated. You can see that the sides are very faded and almost to a gray color. And you can see that everything is really well rusted over. And then what happened is you got all the salt streaking that you can see all down the sides of the car. So we got three basic layers of grime and things to do to this. First, we got to do the fade coat, which is going to be getting this grayed out blue color first. Then, we come back and we do all of the heavy grime coating uh, on the underbody especially, the end bays. All of that is going to be heavily coated up with rust. And you can see all of that. Uh, then the last step, we'll be really focusing on the fine rust details and then doing all of the fine salt streaking that is on these prototypes. And you can see all that is pretty well caked on the side and these maintain this look for many years. Uh, I'm going to be modeling this modern day too, so this is what the car looked like later on and you can see now we have some newer data patches we got some of the deterioration on the patchwork and then there's the safety striping and then the new data added there and I might add some of this graffiti but we'll see I'm not modeling this exact car uh, I'm modeling the 256537 which is the model but I'm using this car as a the sister car obviously as the reference point here uh, but we got a lot to do so let's go ahead and get started at the work <coughs> at the workbench now and ready to go we're ready to start fading and I'm going to be using Anita's white acrylic and I'm going to be using 70% isopropyl alcohol so my fade mix starts with a drop of acrylic you don't need that much just a little bit Matter of fact, that's almost too much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some of that out. Because uh, you really don't need that much, believe me. A little of that paint goes a long way. You're going to be reducing most of that down with alcohol anyway. So what you really need is about that much paint, okay? Very, very little. It's a drop of paint. And a drop of paint is enough to do an entire model, locomotive, freight car, whatever. Even an auto rack, a large rail car or something like that. So what you do now, fill it mostly with alcohol. You can see how much alcohol versus paint is in this cap. Now, I take a mixed paintbrush like this, in this case an old paintbrush, one that I don't use really for anything anymore. Uh, that's pretty worn out and I just use it to really get in there, dig into the cup, and mix that paint very thoroughly. This is ensuring that I'm taking care of all the mixing and I'm trying to get any chunks of paint out, any fine little pieces of debris, or anything like that that are in the paint from, you know, dried paint in the mixed paint anything in the cap I'm trying to get all that mixed in and blended together that way I don't get any specks so I mix that together very thoroughly and just like that we now have our fade coat you can see this is the perfect consistency this is basically the consistency of milk skim milk and what you do now is you get your airbrush set it at 40 psi and you pretty much have the perfect fade set mix uh, for your airbrush and I know a lot of people don't like the airbrush but I use it because it's simple and quick uh, because I don't have unlimited time to sit here and brush coat fade mix on my rail cars but some people do that and that's fine if you want to do that that is fine but in this case for the simplicity and the sake of time I'm using the airbrush so what you do then you run some of that paint through your airbrush and you just see what the pattern looks like you check for any kind of splatter or anything like that you really want to be careful of that if you need to thin this a little bit more do it. If you need to add a little bit more paint and it's too runny, add a little bit more paint and then mix it together. But just keep repeating the step until you get the perfect consistency. And as you can see, this is perfect here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spray this on the entire car and we'll come back and I'll show you guys what this looks like. Alright guys, now moving on to the next step here. I'm going to be 
putting the grime coat on the car next. As you can see, we got the fade coat all finished up. This is quite a few coats of the fade mix. And I've sealed everything in place with dull coat and we're ready to go. The grime mix I'm using is a very dark color. It's a mixture of earth brown and black mixed together with a little bit of that rubbing alcohol. And I'm going to be spraying this all over the sides, mainly on the roof and mainly on the underbody and end bay sheets because this is where the majority of that grime is going to be located. I'm going to be trying to work around some of these patches so I don't get as much rust on these. Uh, if I do get some overspray and things, I'll just wipe it off, but I'm not too concerned about masking it. However, in a case like this, if you want to mask something like this so you can avoid all that extra work, you can, but in comparison to just wiping all that grime off, the work time of masking all of this is about the same so there's really no time saving in that but again if you want to do that and you want to mask all this off to save the cleaning process you can that's up to you but in this case I'm just gonna spray right over that so I'll go ahead and spray the grime coat on and I'll come back and show you guys what that looks like I have once again sealed everything in place with dull coat and the car sides are ready to receive oil work and this is the next step in the process I'm using some Windsor & Newton burnt umber oils and I'm gonna be coating the car sides with a, a thin wash of this in some places but mostly in this case I'm going to be using dry brushing based on the photos because the rust on the sides of the car, the fresher rust, is very blotchy in most spots so I'm going to be using dry brushing effects to basically apply this rust in certain areas mainly around ribs and then I'll work it down but I'm going to keep this very blotchy and I'll show you guys what this looks like here so when I apply it like this it's pretty sloppy and it's a little bit rough but it creates a very convincing effect of blotchy fresher rust so if I take the camera off the tripod this is what this is going to look like I'm basically doing this for the entire car side this effect this looks very good and it's very convincing to what's on the prototype um, which I will pull up the photos again you can see that rust see that blotchy rust there that's what we're trying to recreate on the car sides here again this technique is just what the doctor ordered. On the CSX patching, there's some relatively noticeable rust streaking that's coming down from the sides. This is a common thing you see on these older sold hoppers. And I'm going to be replicating this with a fine tip Atlas brush to do some of these streaking effects. Just going down the sides of the car, adding these random little streaks. And you can do this in progressive little washes. I'm keeping the paint relatively diluted here so it spreads pretty nice and I'm also watching where my hand is on the side so I don't accidentally bump into some of that other fresh oil paint. The next step here is to start laying in all of the insane rust pitting. This car has tons of rust pitting if you look at the prototype photos again and what I'm going to do is use my fine Atlas number 10 brush to lay some of these pits in. Most of these do not have any streaks or anything coming down from them but they're pretty significant and you can see them right through all this grime um, and I'm just going to use my prototype photos to just put these in where they need to be and again it's along ribs at the base of the car things like that is really where these are and so I'm going to be going pretty heavy with all of these as I work on the top of the car I'm using that burnt umber oil and I'm using a very long brush here to apply this underneath the roof walk like this and then fan it out. I'm going full strength, this paint is not diluted. I want a very heavy coat on the roof because there's a lot of heavy rust uh, from years of uh, accumulation. So I'm spreading this across the top and then again working it out to the very edge of the roof here. I'm not worrying about the roof walk, we're going to do that separately with some different techniques. But again this is full strength oil applied with a uh, long brush 